Okay, I'd just like to introduce my grad student, Linda Major. Uh, we're going now from whole plants to plant cellular fractions, which is a certainly a technologic, technical challenge. Linda has spent many, many extremely long and late nights learning the hard way, the finer points of how to get uh, organelle fractions from cells and picked up quite a few techniques, probably ran more gels and western blots uh, than anybody in this university for quite some time. But uh, she's got an interesting story to tell and I'd like to introduce Miss Linda. <coughs> Uh, my project is based on the idea that a cell's genome is continuously exposed to agents that damage its DNA. Damaged DNA activates uh, the cell's damage response to either repair the DNA or induce apoptosis, which results in the demise of the cell. During the DNA's damage response that induces apoptosis, chromatin compaction around the damaged site is relaxed through epigenetic core histone modifications and uh, the displacement of the linker histone. At the beginning of 2012, Cascone and his team published a study that showed in animal cells displaced histones enter the cytoplasm and bind to the, uh, the cell's mitochondrion that leads to the permeabilization of the inner and outer membranes causing cytochrome C to be released from the mitochondrion's intermembrane space. This study concluded in mammalian cells, histone proteins released uh, from damaged nuclear DNA can enter the cytoplasm, bind to mitochondria, and affect the release of cytochrome C. The goal of this project is to work with mitochondria and histones obtained from plant material to determine if histones bind to mitochondria as evidenced in animals, and if they do, determine if bound histones affect the release of cytochrome C from the intermembrane space of mitochondria. Positive results will suggest that, histones uh, that the histone interaction with mitochondria is a highly conserved mechanism amongst animals and plants. The protocol of this research uses store-bought uh, cauliflower. First, I ground it up into a slurry, and then I uh, poured the slurry uh, through a filter to collect the liquid, and finally, I uh, centrifuged the liquid to isolate the mitochondria and the histone proteins. The experimental procedure is, was very simple. I added uh, the histone fraction to the mitochondria fraction, and then after a 10 minute incubation time, uh, the mixture was centrifuged uh, to separate the um, mitochondria from the histones that are not bound to the uh, mitochondria. Ultimately, the pellet containing mitochondria was analyzed for uh, mitochondria bound histones and the supernatant was analyzed for the released mitochondria specific protein cytochrome C. The experimental analysis used Western blotting techniques. And uh, if the collective analysis, when comparing the histones with the added mitochondria samples uh, to the mitochondria only and the histone only samples, showed an increase in the mitochondria bound histones and an increase in the detected release of the mitochondria specific protein cytochrome C, it'll suggest that. Uh, Histones bind to mitochondria to cause permeabilization in their membranes, and histones affect mitochondria in the same manner as evidenced in uh, the animal study. This is the results. This is uh, the actual the western blot, uh, picture of the western blot in a baggie. Um, the top blot is the analysis against the uh, H3 histone, and the bottom is the blot analysis against the cytochrome C. Um, protein. This is a digitally enhanced uh, <coughs> version of, of each of them. Obviously, the top one is, is um, the top one is equal to the to the uh, histone three, and the bottom one is uh, the cytochrome C. You'll see that in uh, lane one is the uh, molecular weight protein standard, and the uh, 
the uh, molecules of interest are at the 15 kilodalton range, which are right in here and, and in here. The, uh, these other signals that you see up here and the faint bands up here are all of uh, unknown proteins that cross-reacted with, uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the antibodies. It's normal, uh, possibly typical, depending on the antibody that you're actually using. Uh, we don't care what they, we don't care what they are, and we don't care, you know, about them. It has no uh, value to the analysis. Lanes two and three. If you go up and down, lanes two and three in both of them. The first one is the, uh, the actual pellet, and this is the supernatant. You'll see that in the uh, the top blot that um, um, that histones were are present are evidence in the pellet and the supernatant. And uh, if you look at here, you can see that uh, there is much more histones in the supernatant than the pellet. This is uh, simply because it's not possible to get every every drop of supernatant out of the pellet. There could be some uh, histones actually attached to the to the uh, the tube and uh, still some liquid. Um, in the bottom, you can see that there is obviously there is no evidence of cytochrome C in either the pellet or the supernatant. This means that the histone fraction is analytically free of mitochondria or any of the mitochondria-specific proteins. Uh, cytochrome C. Lanes four and five, which are these two lanes here, uh, the first one is the pellet and the second one is the supernatant, you'll see that in the histone plot that there are, uh, there is evidence of um, histones in the pellet, not in the supernatant, and this shows that, that probably nuclei were uh, ruptured uh, during the mitochondria isolation procedure. And interestingly, that whatever histones were released did bind to whatever mitochondria was there, and there were none um, in um, free floating. And uh, here you see that cytochrome C is uh, evidence in the pellet and, and not the supernatant, which means that there are plenty of intact mitochondria in the sample. Now the interesting lanes, the last two lanes. This is, uh, these represent the mitochondria and the added histones, the incubated for the 10 minutes centrifuge, and uh, these are the results. You'll notice that there is uh, histones present in both the uh, pellet and the supernatant. And uh, what this is showing that it is that I indeed added an excess of histones. And it, it shows that whatever histones, um, whatever histone, whatever mitochondria was available for histones to attach to, they did. And whatever uh, was left over, that there, there was obviously some left over, and it was found in the supernatant. And in this, uh, the bottom, uh, you can see right here, this little, little tiny faint band. That's the yippee moment. That shows that um, that the histones did cause um, um, the membrane of the mitochondria to be permeabilized and allowed uh, the cytochrome C to be released from the mitochondria. And you can see here that um, Excuse me. Um, all right. The, uh, the faintness of this band is simply due to the supernatant being so dilute. And as a matter of fact, in the Cascone study, uh, they also ran across the same problem. They tried to, uh, uh, they attempted to actually concentrate the supernatant to, uh, to get a better visual. The results of this experiment suggest that histones induce permeabilization in plant mitochondria that causes the release of cytochrome C from the intermembrane space of mitochondria. And, uh, 
And the significance of this project is finding that there is a similar interaction between plants and animal histones with its mitochondria suggests that this interaction is uh, a highly conserved mechanism and it also provides researchers with additional information and data that can be used to control apoptosis in both plants and animals. Future studies uh, will include investigating the histone uh, effects on fungi, protists, and other organisms to, to determine if there is a similar histone mitochondria interaction uh, that is conserved across eukaryotes. Also investigating the effects of cross incubation of histones with different taxon to determine how highly conserved the, uh, this mitochondria histone interaction is and also investigating ways to control uh, apoptosis to the benefit of uh, farmers and growers. And with that, uh, I thank you very much, and are there any questions?